Hi, everybody. I know you're eating lunch and not paying attention, but we're going to try to be somewhat interesting uh, for you in this uh, short time we have with Ilya. Um, so I just want to start um, by asking everybody here, who would take a free TV in exchange for your data and advertising? So all of you. Look at that. As it turns out, here's a man who has that available for you. Um, Ilya, why don't you try to explain what you're doing in a, very briefly, because I have been through every version of this since the beginning of time. The idea of a smart television, the idea of giving away hardware for free in order to do advertising or whatever. Uh, most of these businesses have not thrived. So yeah. talk a little bit about what you do. Yeah, sure. So, so my last company at Pluto TV, we, we proved that you can run a very sustainable business on just advertising alone, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of charging a monthly subscription fee for cable and then delivering ads, Pluto delivered a, a service that's completely ad supported. And at Pluto, we had a chance to build our app for every TV manufacturer, right? So we saw that TVs uh, were struggling making money on the hardware mm -hmm. uh, because every TV kind of hit this commodity state. And, and today, consumers walk into you know, Best Buy or Costco, uh, they see what's on sale and they buy it and there's very little brand loyalty because every TV is, is pretty much marginally the same across the board, right? So if you're not making any money on the hardware, is there a way to run a business on just advertising alone? And that's exactly what Telly is doing, right? We're, we're building by far the smartest TV on the market. This thing, uh, if we were to retail this device, it would be over $1,000, right? And we're giving it away for free, and it's fully, it's fully ad supported. It's a dual display TV, and it, and, it, and it allows you to do so much more than just stream content. It's got a full assistant built in. It's got an amazing sound bar. You could do Zoom calls, like listen to Spotify, and, and so much more. So the, the idea is you get this TV for free, but then you became a creature of your advertising, right? That you accept advertising. So the main screen is a regular television, right? Correct. Underneath it is a sound bar, which most people have, but under it's another screen, which is a dashboard. That's so right. on that is what? Yeah, that, so that bottom screen is all attached. It's one unit. Um, while you're watching TV, we show you sports scores, news, weather, things that are really useful, like things that normally people are distracted with when they pick up their phone while they're watching TV, we actually put it front and center. So let's say like you're watching Monday Night Football, you're, we put sports scores around the country, so you actually get to see what, you know, how the teams are doing that you're paying attention to instead of being distracted. Or let's say you're watching a movie, we put up actor information or maybe trivia. And we do have an ad in the bottom right corner as well that's there and that's supporting you know, the cost of the TV. That's what's, that's what's allowing us to to give away the TV completely and free. And so the advertisers you want there are advertisers that are actionable, right? That people can then buy a pizza from Pizza Hut or whoever. Yeah, completely right. So, so let's say you're watching football. There's an ad that shows up for Pizza Hut. You can actually take out re your remote and purchase a pizza because it's not a 15-second or 30-second video ad in between content. That's really only there for brand reach, right? These are ads that are actionable and performance-based, right? So let's say we show an ad for you know, a local Toyota dealership, you can actually schedule a test drive, right? Right. But p do people actually take action because they're watching the television, they're doing something else? Yeah, no, we're seeing people take action on the ads. It's absolutely working, right? So you can, you can scan a QR code with your phone or you can actually take action directly on the ad. And the beautiful thing is the ads are fully addressable, right? They're fully relevant to, and uh, the ads that you're getting are very different than the ads that I'm getting. Right. right? And they're one-to-one -one addressable, right? So. So, th so the ad, when, when you're getting actionable ads that are relevant, people actually want to take action when they're delivered at the right time. All right, so when people are watching TV, do they particularly want to be disrupted in any way? I would imagine they want to watch whatever's on the screen and not have, like, often when I'm watching a Netflix show and I want to see the actors, I, I stop the show and I jump into it. They're on the side. Why would anybody want to be distracted while they're watching whether it's succession or whatever. Oh, here's all about Brian Cox as he lays dying, yeah. for example. I'm sorry if that's a spoiler. But a spoiler alert. Yeah. Fuck you if you haven't watched yeah. it. I'm sorry. That's funny. No, I mean, that's a great question. I think, I think right now it's, it's 2023. We have to right. accept that we live in a multi-screen environment, right? right. Uh -huh. Everyone's got their phones on them, their computers in front of them. We're distracted as it is. Everyone's paying attention to their phones while they're looking at the TV. I think once you admit and accept that, you understand that this second screen on the bottom 
is actually there to enhance what you're doing. And right. actually, it's, a, it's less of a distraction than taking out your phone. So we, we improve the content experience of what you're watching. As are just a small portion of it, we see our users love the bottom screen because it makes the whole experience better. The best analogy that I use on this, it's kind of like your car, right? Like you're driving, the top screen is your windshield, you're paying attention to the road, but then you've got this whole dash, right, where you've got your speedometer, your radio, your nav, et cetera. That's what we're doing with a dual screen TV. It's, it's not just there for advertising, it's literally there because we live in this multi-screen environment. You right. might as well put it front and center in front right. of everybody. Not sure that's the best analogy because you're not supposed to be looking at anything but the windshield when you're driving. Although I just rode in, uh, all the autonomous cars in San Francisco, and it's oh, really? fantastic. Yeah, I, dra I, I drank and I texted the whole time. <laughs> um, so, so when you're using it, the, the idea is you give them the TV for free so they feel good about getting that. You then install it in their home, or w how does this work? Yeah, so, so the TV is a standard TV. You can install it, hang it on your wall. It's got three HDMI ports. Right. Uh, you can you can watch whatever you want on it. You can you can watch cable, satellite, your streaming services. So attach whatever you have. Attach to. any anything you want whatsoever. We you know we don't have a conflict of interest with with our with our users. We don't we don't care if you're inside our operating system or if you're using your favorite streaming device, your Apple TV or whatever. Right. So they can watch on the main screen. Correct. But whatever comes on the second screen is yours. That's is right. Yours that's right. And we use that to enhance what you're watching and making that experience better. All right. So explain what else you could enhance behind sports scores and information. You so, can have what? Zoom, you said? You can Zoom with people while you're watching TV. Yeah. So, so yeah. So we have Zoom built in, right? We, you, can, you can watch. You can tune into the same program on the top screen and your friends and family across the country appear on the bottom and now you're watching together, right? And your mm -hmm. content is synchronized and, and you're having this amazing experience. People have always tried to do this kind of watch party by using your phone, but that never really works, right? But because this thing is front and center, you know, you're able to create that experience. We also, we're full assistant. So you can say, hey, Telly, you know, put on Spotify. Hey, Telly, launch Netflix, right? Put on your favorite right. show. So like we're, you know, if you, if you remember the iPhone when it first came out, it, it killed a lot of devices, right? Like it got rid of the camera, the navigation, the portable music player. Because televisions today have really stayed the same for the last like nine, 10 years, there's been very little innovation. It's literally hit this commodity state where TV companies are so obsessed about every little penny that they can make or lose on the hardware. Instead of innovating, they're, they're cutting out bomb costs and forcing you to buy speakers so they can make some sort of margin on there, right? We right. went completely the other way. We said, let's give people by far the best TV in the market, right? Let's overload it with extra hardware, kind of like a Tesla, mm -hmm. right? And let's make it better and better over time. So every two to four weeks, we push out software updates. And we make this TV smarter and smarter and smarter. And our goal, we, we don't want you to get a new TV every year. We, wanna, we want this to be so powerful where this, is, this becomes your primary TV for six, seven years. For six and seven. So you, can you take over the top TV with advertising or does everything stay on that bottom? No, we, we could. We have, so we're, our operating system uh, controls both screens, right? But, but we don't, like... Unlike other TV makers, we don't mind if you use another device, right? But when, you, when you're someone else, when you're another TV maker, you're kind of trying to force people into your operating system because that's where you can deliver your advertising, Whether it's Samsung right? Or right, whoever. right. Or, or if you're Roku, you want people to watch like the, the Roku channel, et cetera. We don't have that built in conflict. Whatever you want to watch, you should watch. If you want to bring over your favorite device, bring over your favorite device. That's, that's not, we, we want to have a positive relationship with our consumers. So who, who would, Take this, because you don't want to give, you assume you want to go to a high-end group of people because they buy things, right? Why wouldn't they want to buy their own TV? Why would they, first of all, I'm thinking creepy. Like, that would be my first thing, is that people are surveilling, you're surveilling me in some fashion. Talk about what that yeah. is. Like, I can afford a TV. I don't need you to spy on me in order to get stuff. Well, well first of all, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. The, we, we, launched, we announced publicly on May 15th. Within the first week, we had over a quarter million people sign up. It was, we were getting a sign up every second. So, mm -hmm. and, and, and looking at the data, the, the type of people that are signing up are actually wealthier, they're more educated, and we're over-indexing. They're two-thirds Gen Z millennials. So, so the, the whole idea that this is going to target a low-income family that can't afford a TV is just completely wrong. The, the kind of people that are signing up are the exact audience that, 
that um, advertisers love. And, it, and it's targeting kind of your broad Walmart America, if you will. It's a, it, we have audiences all over. So we, people thought similar about Pluto TV, right? Because Pluto is completely free. So they thought it was going to be a very like, low income. Because why would, you, why would you get a free service when you could pay $10 a month that has no ads, right? And yeah. obviously, Pluto proved that wrong with over 80 million subscribers and over a billion dollars in ad revenue today. Uh, the, the demo and the, of, the, of the audience that are watching Pluto are literally all over the board, and we're seeing the exact same thing with telly. So when you're, so what your ideal person would be someone who's willing to, to use the advertising as helpful to them, as opposed to right now advertising is either interstitial at the beginning or the end, but it's interruptive to the whole experience, right? So that, you want to eliminate that. That's right, and right, like, let's, be, let's be clear, right now a lot of advertising you know, isn't seen potentially, right? Or it's being delivered to people that it's not relevant to, right? If you're Verizon, you want to advertise to people that maybe don't have Verizon, mm -hmm. but, but how many, what percentage of people are seeing the ad that already have the service, right? So there are a lot of wasted impressions. And the idea behind telly is all the ads are fully addressable. Every ad is individual. We don't blanket, you know, you don't, we don't plug into any third party sources for data. Everything that we have is zero party and it allows us to run a very relevant ad experience, which is a win-win for both the consumer because they're getting relevant ads and for the advertiser because the ads are actually being delivered to the exact home that they want to be but delivered to. But the only to. place for the ad is that corner, right? Is that the only ad yeah. experience people have? We, we, have uh, we have ads on both screens. So when you first turn on telly, you go to a welcome screen, kind of like a hotel. Right. right. So we'll say welcome, Kara. And, and there is an opportunity for a tune in ad, for example, like what do you want to watch? That's a great opportunity to put a tune in spot. Right. right. Uh, but then what, when you're when you're actually inside content, we're not competing with what you're watching. And, and the majority of our ads are, are on the bottom. They're displayed. They're not video. They're not interrupting your viewing experience. Uh, they're there just to support what you're doing. But it could be. They could click watch the video here, correct? Correct, correct. Yeah. And let's say you're in a screensaver mode or you're in a pause ad. We have opportunities to deliver standard ad units across both screens. But, and, and then, yeah, you can expand the ad on the bottom. So how do TV manufacturers feel about this? You're buying a lot of TVs, right? So they like right. that. But at the same time, they've been trying desperately to get into that game themselves. Badly, I would say. Mostly. Yeah. I think right now TV manufacturers are kind of stuck in their in the hardware business, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. And and the hardware business is a tough business, especially when you hit this commodity state. And the difference between your product and the next product is so tiny. The only thing you have on it is brand and price, right? So right. And naturally, that becomes a race to the bottom on price. And this is why there's been literally no innovation in television in, in over a decade, right? The, the TV is by far the biggest screen in your home, right? It's the main device in your living room, but it's also the dumbest device, right? Our phones, our computers do so much more than televisions. It's, that's because there's no margin to innovate, right? Mm -hmm. And instead of trying to innovate and create a future thinking device, um, you know, TV companies started to look for other revenue streams like advertising. So currently, they're literally selling you a TV, then they're selling your data, and they're selling you advertising. They're triple dipping on the revenue, and we feel like that's not right. And the right way is to build a TV that's by far the smartest TV, the most disruptive product in the market. And at this point, if you can't make money on the hardware anyway, why not be able to take the whole market very quickly and give away the product? So when you think about the, your competitors, I would say television company, the TV makers have been trying to do this. I don't think I've ever used one thing offered by, I turn it all off right. immediately. Um, I, I've used all the various attempts at this, whether, just all of them, pretty much. And most of them fall by the wayside, and then you just plug your TV into a comp, like, is cable your competitor then? No, not at all. I think we, we actually become a really good bundle into other people's services, right? So I think the idea of working with cable companies, MVPD, streaming services, and, and including a free TV with their service is a great way for us to partner, right? That's, everybody wins at that point, right? It, so even if, even, let, let's say we have a partnership with you know, a Comcast or a DirecTV, even if a subscriber potentially churns, right, they, they don't necessarily churn because that television is still the main device in their home. Right. In, Churns off of cable. Off of cable. Right. They but might they still have a way to reach that consumer. Because if you're saying, so millennials are your goal, correct? I mean, our target audience is very, is very broad. We're going after, you know, kind of 18 plus. But we have, we have over-indexed. Two-thirds of the, of the people that have signed up to get a telly so far on the wait list have been Gen Z millennials. Gen Z millennials. And millennials, yeah. 
and and presumably because they don't want to pay for a television and they're willing they're willing to do it. Do you actually think you're going to replace people looking at phones while they're watching TV, correct? That's the goal. I mean, I, that, that already happens. All the data is out there that people live in a multi-screen world and they're distracted while they're watching TV. So, but, but uh, presumably you want to become that distraction below, right? Uh, we we want to be front and center. So imagine if you're, you know, instead of, let's say you're, you're in a state where sports betting is legal, right? And let's say right. you want to place a, a bet during a game that you're watching. It's much better to do that front and center on, uh, as you're watching a game on the screen below, right, than, right. than you are on, on your phone. So any app can go on there for well, people. Well, we're not an open app store right now. So right now the apps that we have on there, we've, we've actually partnered with to so put on there. So what are, give me some examples. Uh, like, like Zoom, Spotify. We've got over 50 video games, including motion tracking gaming. We've got uh, fitness, things like that. We, we, you know, we've got a full assistant. So, you, you know, you don't need an external speaker. You don't need an assistant. You don't need a fitness device. You don't need a gaming machine. This is everything all in one. And as I mentioned earlier, every two to four weeks, we're going to run software updates. And, you know, in a few months, this thing might become a karaoke machine. And now you're singing into your microphone, which, you know, has a, has a, into your remote, which has a microphone in it. And now, now you're doing karaoke with your friends. So talk about the fitness, because a lot of people, a lot of these businesses have hit the wall. A lot, most of them are going out of right. business. The mirrors, etc. Yeah, I mean, when you're looking at a, at a this is a, one of those examples where there's, because TVs haven't innovated, other devices started to pop up, right? The idea that mirror sells you a fitness device for $800, which is literally a screen and a camera, right. it's just something is drastically wrong about that, right? Mm -hmm. So, so the, your TV should have already been doing that in 2023. Right. And, and so we built a television that has that capability, the camera is there for only for the for the consumer, right? We, Telly doesn't use the camera for any any internal purposes whatsoever, and and you're literally there working out in front of your device, right? Mm -hmm. You're it's tracking your 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 motion and it's helping you stay fit and become better. And we do the same thing with video games, kind of like an Xbox Connect, where you're playing games by by like moving your body and jumping and so forth. So that you would replace those completely, like they, I, I, or you I, could partner with them, presumably. I, I, th right now, they're partners. Right? We're partnering with you know with software companies because we're the we're we're one big partner machine, right? Where mm -hmm. we become the main device. This in the same way where where like the iPhone is your main, where your main device while you're you're out and about on the road. We believe we're going to become the main device in the home. And you know, somebody rings your ring doorbell. Their video shows up on the bottom screen. You want to turn up your thermostat? You know, you say, "Hey, Telly, make it warmer in my house, right?" So right. E even when your even when your top screen is off, right, you can leave the bottom screen on, and and this becomes your main smart home hub, if you will. Right. So I'm I'm thinking probably one of the bigger competitors would be someone like Apple. Like they want to, yeah. since they're doing it with the iPhone, why should they let you do anything? Uh, that's right. I mean, at this point, if you uh, you may not even need a tablet, right? You may not need an iPad because you know the, you're you're using an iPad because you want a big screen to do other things while you're watching TV. Right. We have, I mean, we have a bigger iPad right there, front and center on your wall. You don't you don't need a secondary device. You could control that bottom screen while you're watching TV. And let's say, let, like I have kids, right? They let's say I'm watching something like news or something, and they're not interested. Instead of them running into their room with their iPads to play a game, we actually put on games front right there on that bottom screen. So so my kids can take the remote and play Flappy Bird while we're watching TV and things like that. So we really we try to bring the family together. Mm -hmm. knowing and accepting the fact that we live in a multi-screen world and they're going to be disconnected But the screen anyway. at the bottom is much smaller, right? You, that, that feels it's, rather distracting. Yeah, it's you. the same width as your TV, but it's about eight inches in, in height. So it's more with news or other information. That's right. But there, there are games like Flappy Bird that, that work itself well to like a, a horizontal experience and, uh -huh. you know, and, and a second screen. So can you talk a little bit about why... I mean, I just spent some time with Apple at their vision. That's going to replace all screens, as far as I can tell. You know, having spent just even a short amount of time, it's very obvious that Apple's version of this is no television, it's nothing on the wall, that the wall is the wall. Um, how do you compete against that? I think at the end of the day, people, everyone has a TV. Uh, right. Throughout the day, we see televisions left and right, whether it's... In, sports bars or restaurants or you know or definitely in our home i don't think tvs are going anywhere for a long time 
but I do think TVs are ripe for disruption because they are not being innovated. So that, that's why we believe a dual screen TV is, is the future, right? Where TVs have evolved in being large kind of, you know, square rectangles furniture in, in our home to being flat, right? And then, and then this phrase of smart TVs surfaced whenever the Blu-ray whenever the Blu-ray disc went online, right? right? But let's face it, they're they're not really smart. When you're when you just have a single screen that's just outputting content and the chipset in, inside the TV is as dumb as an ATM machine, there's not much it can do and that's why we're using other devices. Right. We wanted to flip that on its head and build the smartest TV. We loaded extra power in there and the second screen allows you to do way more way more than your traditional TV can. But I think the issue is it's the difficulty of getting it together from way back in the video recording days to today, it's an incredibly difficult to switch. But I think most of the problems in the home of the TV have to do with the confusion between channels and which one you're using or moving into Disney or moving into anything. I, that, that's why I want, I want to press you a little harder on this. No screen at all, yeah. where everything's in a heads-up display that you wear. I, I mean, I think that's, uh, it's not, to me, that's not realistic. We believe that t televisions will exist in the home and they're not going anywhere, mm -hmm. but they need to take a step forward and, and improve, right? So, so that, that's, that's what we're doing with telly. So do you imagine that you would take over the whole TV and not that it would be, that you, well, you're trying to be like Apple TV, right? Or something like that. No, we, we don't have the, we're not trying to be like Apple TV because Apple wants you inside their operating system. They want you watching their content. For right. us, it's completely different. We, we want to be, right now, we live in a very fragmented world, right? We, cable has unbundled, right? People are right. using multiple apps at the same time. Sure. And the content... Because the TV right now is an app service, as far as that, I can That's tell. right. But, the, but when you're inside Apple TV, Apple's recommending Apple content, right? The, right? It's very hard for Apple to promote content without other people's services. They and then do you it. Have a, they do it. You have a built-in... But you have a built-in... Like, like, Netflix is not within the Apple ecosystem, right? Where that single app isn't promoting content. But being at the center of, of what you're watching... We have the opportunity to recommend content on any service, whether that's a streaming service, satellite, cable, over the air. And the content recommendations that we're delivering to somebody like me are different than like you because they're completely different and unique. So that's the one advantage we have is we could be at the center and help you actually figure out what to watch in a much better way. Imagine you're browsing Netflix, right? And you're, you're going through titles. Right now, people are taking out their phones and they're like, okay, let me check out the Rotten Tomatoes review before I invest two and a half hours into this movie, make sure it's worth my time. Right. Imagine doing that and as you're flipping through titles within Netflix or any other service, the Rotten Tomatoes reviews are popped up right below and automatically change as you're moving tile to tile to tile. Right. Now you're living in this non-distracted single device environment that's helping you make better, better decisions. Right. What, what did you look at that didn't work in the past? Because there's been a lot. I've forgotten every single one of these smart TV efforts. But I, I don't even remember them until someone reminds me of them. Yeah. I, I think it's really that the fact that, like, literally TVs have not changed in, in a decade, right? And, right. And, and because there's such a high concern over the margin on the hardware, there's been literally no innovation. So b because of that, it's just... Like when something hits that, that commodity state, that's when an industry is ripe for disruption, right? So, right. and not disruption just from a price point, but from the actual hardware itself. And, and, the, and we're not positioned as a hardware company. We're very much going experience first, mm -hmm. and we're positioned as a software company. So last couple of questions is about um, data. What data are you collecting as people start to use this? Because that's another area that yeah. presumably is lucrative for you possibly problematic for the consumer, and of course, regulatory scrutiny is yeah. hanging, not that they scrutinize anything anymore, but. Yeah, no, I'm so glad you asked that. So we're, we have a very transparent relationship with our consumer, right? Right now, when you're buying a, like a TV in, in a store, Samsung TV or what have you, they, they, don't, they don't know who you are, right? So they're trying to plug into third-party data sources to figure out who is this home. And that's why the, you know, they're delivering, you, they're selling you a TV and they're delivering advertising and they're trying to force you into their content experience. There's a built-in conflict of interest even though they're selling you a device, right? So our relationship with our consumers is very privacy first. We're very transparent, right? We're explaining what the value exchange is. We're letting you know that here's a, here's a free TV and we want you to opt in 
in, in order to get the TV into, into sharing your data and so we could deliver relevant advertising to you. And, and the value is, is that we're giving you a free TV in exchange and then the relationship between the consumer and the advertiser becomes positive mm -hmm. because the ads are now relevant. They're fully addressable. We can give you proper content recommendations based on, on the data that we have. So the entire experience actually becomes positive and not negative. And the other TV makers are being very opaque about what they're doing. Right? Mm -hmm. everyone, everyone looks at like what you're watching, everyone looks at the audience that you are, right? We just do that in the exact same way, no different than anyone else, but in a very upfront and transparent way. And our data is, I guess, what everyone's referring to as zero party data, right. because consumers are actually giving, giving that to us. And, and that's part of the agreement when they take the TV. That's right, and, and we've also proven that consumers have no issue whatsoever with this because over a quarter million of them signed up within a week. All right, so when do they start going out? They, you have a quarter million. Where, how much funding did you get? I mean, we've raised a good amount of capital for the What's company. What's that amount? I, we, we haven't disclosed that Why number not? of profit. We just, we, we just elected not to do that as, a, as an independent private company. Just, All right. You know, because we want to have a competitive advantage. But I can tell you we've got a lot of capital, and we've got well, some of the best, the best inv investors in, in this space. You know, I, I, can, I can mention, like, you know, Lightspeed. a Rich Greenfield, for example, Rich from Greenfield. Lightshed is one of our one of our investors and, and a few others in the, in the media space, but yeah. So when you, when you get those out to people, presumably the biggest part will be delivering them properly and getting them into people's homes and using them properly. Do you have a white glove treatment or anything like that to do that? Uh, that, that we, we actually use standard FedEx uh, UPS to deliver the, it's a standard parcel shipment, right? It's completely free. We don't charge anything for shipping either. You can install the unit on the wall or you can, you can put it on your counter. It's a standard TV, so you can use your existing mount or, or you could just put it on your counter. And it actually looks really cool because, you know, for, for those ha that haven't seen it, check out freetelly.com and you can see what the TV looks like. But it's, it's, it's a beautiful dual screen TV and the sound bar is, is really high end and it's, and it's off white a little bit. So you can actually, it, it almost disappears into your wall if uh -huh. you will, and it, be, it looks like you have two floating screens on your wall. It's really beautiful. Right, and that's, someone might buy a Sonos there or something. I, right. I don't think they need to buy a Sonos. We have a six-driver speaker uh, right. built in uh, into that's the device. That's where someone would have bought a oh, Sonos. Oh, exactly. You, you don't, right. you know, the, like, it's so, the way to look at it, I'm glad you said it, because it's not even just a free TV, right? It's a, it's a free smart home controller. It's a free fitness device. It's a free sound bar. We're giving you so much value at literally zero dollars. Uh, no. All right. Now, does anyone have any questions? We only have a few time. Uh, I'll repeat them. So go ahead. Oh, here. Here we go. So fast forward a year from now. Do you, is, is your company going to say, is somebody going to say, holy shit, I got this great device in my living room and I want my neighbors to get it because A, the, the uh, advertising that's coming to me is so relevant that I'm ex enjoying my experience or I have a free fitness thing and I have this great sound system or whatever because you keep talking about somebody is going to take this television because of that quid pro quo between advertising and the Value. device. So I'm interested in is, is this device going to be that thing we've always been looking for of of the right ad to the right person at the right time. Like, this is relevant. I don't need diaper ads in my house because I don't have kids, that kind of stuff. I'm using it so much that this is a device that I actually do commerce with. Right, so that, that is a good question. Ki the, the idea is that you wouldn't, because most people when they see an ad will go to an Amazon on their own phone or something else. So that relevant ads is a huge issue, and most of the ads on television you either scroll through or they're totally irrelevant, and you're astonished that you're getting it on some level, right? Yeah. Right. Like yeah. he's he, there's there's questions to be like what what kind of information is Telly getting that all the yes. he mentioned zero party. Where are you getting your information? The, what they're suddenly they're watching. The, cons the consumer is giving us inf that information directly, right? So the sign up process is you download the Telly app, right. you fill out a like a six minute questionnaire uh, about your household and. And then when your TV gets delivered, that, that data is attached to the television, and now the ads become fully addressable. And, and to, you know, to answer your question, like, don't, don't, be, you know, don't be confused by free. This is not a low-budget TV whatsoever. It's by far the smartest TV on the market, right? So free, free is just a hook, but then you bring it home and you realize it's the best TV that, that you can have, and absolutely your neighbors will get it. 
Um, and go ahead. Hi, Dave Morgan. Love the interview. Hey, Dave. Um, you, know, you know, I'm a fan. What, what I find really interesting, and I'd love if you could talk about this, is you talk about the ad experience, the relevance that Steve talks about, and the commerce piece, which you can enable. But what about all the stuff you can do in between? Like, you've basically got this big tablet, like, you know, the communication, engagement, surveys, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, so while you're watching TV, this is the content enhancement, right? You can see, you know, actor information and, like, movie trivia, sports scores, your fantasy sports shows up. You know, you could do sports betting, things like that. So we're, we're, we're doing everything we can to actually enhance the content experience. And, and, like, passively, you can also look at the news ticker, look at the weather, right? Just it's, it's really there just to make your whole, your whole living room experience better. We want, our goal is to make this TV by far the smartest TV and the center of your home, right? The, this, we want this to be the main device in your home. Right now, televisions still today are watched over five and a half hours per day in a, in a home, right, across your household. The main TV, which is the space we're going after, is, is watched over three hours per day. Right. And we're, re we're ready in homes right now. Like, so we, we see this data. We, we're seeing a lot of our users, uh, first of all, our consumers are watching this as their main TV, and they're using this beyond their main television experience. But we also see a lot of experiences where they're, where they're not even watching television. Maybe the TV is in art mode, and they're showing artwork, or maybe you're listening to music, and you're entertaining your, your friends and your family for dinner. And, and that bottom screen is actually used for other means, like you're checking the latest sports game, you're looking at the news, things like that. So we, our goal so is it's really a persistent. To be, you want it to be a persistent. Yeah, I mean, you, you can turn everything off, right? But yeah. but we see a lot of people actually leaving it on because it's there to be very helpful. And what are they watching uh, persistently? So the, so like there's a news ticker that's scrolling by, or the weather changes. You can check out the forecast once again without taking out your phone and being distracted. And, they're seeing and the front can, center. You can make it stuff. I don't want any more news about blank correct everything is fully personalized and customizable you can choose the widget that's there you can make it go away you could choose the news source that you want you know whether you want local news entertainment news whether you want cnn or fox or what have you you that's fully personalized and customizable. Personalized. all right one more question right here there's two Hi. more questions uh two minutes no, no, go ahead no i'm just huge kidding. fan of pivot um thank you thank you for being here uh you guys are really changing the uh, monetization model for what's a hardware business and turning it into a software business. So as you're looking at that, the value of the data and the advertising become the monetization. What kind of scale do you guys need and what are you projecting for that to actually work? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. I mean, for, for us, we, we even, uh, we're valuable even at small scale, right? At a certain point, obviously, advertisers want reach, but there's a lot of value in the data even at, even at smaller scales. So that value exists from day one. That we already have uh, you know, plenty of those data deals and advertising deals in place right now. Meaning, explain that a little further, so that you can, but presumably most of your revenue will come from advertising. Yeah, yeah pretty much all of, the, all of the revenue is forecasted to come from advertising, but you know, we have the ability to you know, also uh, monetize the data like any other TV maker does, and, right. and, and we do that. And what's the reaction from the TV makers? I mean, so far, the, the, the few conversations we've had with companies that also have, have televisions in, our, in the advertising space is, is all partnership related, right? They're all interested in working with us. They, they know that we have a, an opportunity to take, to take the market very quickly, like Pluto did, right? Pluto, in, in only in under five years, has really become a staple in every home, and, and they see that same opportunity with us. So, so they're, why, the But why do you think they missed the boat on this? They were there with that. A long time. For, first of all, I would say difficult to use, difficult to create, difficult. It just wasn't intuitive in any way. Yeah. No, I, I think that's a great question. I think when, you're, when your mindset is that you're a hardware business and your entire differentiation of, okay. against other products are on hardware, right? You're, right? you're more concerned whether your display is OLED or LED or 8K or 4K or, you know, do you have curved screens? Do you have 3D? Like, yes, all I those see. bells and whistles. At the end of the day, when you look at the consumer, they don't, most of them don't care about that, they right? Don't. They don't. And, and every TV today well, is... Well, there's one guy who does. 
It's always there's, one guy. There's always some guy that one does. guy. But but the majority of consumers don't, and I think yeah. they missed the boat on that. And and they're still operating very much as hardware companies. Yeah. And and for them, software and advertising is an afterthought, and they frankly just don't know how to run those businesses. Yeah. That's the world I you know I come from from Pluto. We're you know we're an advertising first you know streaming service, and and Telly is an advertising first television yeah. company. Probably the only. Company that's managed to do that is Apple to be able to shift over, and it was difficult for them also. All right, last question. Oh, two. Qu no more. No more questions. No more All questions. right, everyone. Where can you get this thing? Uh, you can get our free telly dot com. Free telly, and free you still telly. have TVs available. That's right. Our sign up list. I mean, we've got a long wait list, but we we're making a lot of TVs this year, so yeah. we'll get them to you. All right, great, Ilya. Thank you.